EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchant here with your outlook for October 23rd, 2025. The Thursday video forecast is proudly sponsored by Kleckner & Sons Appliances. Family owned and operated Kleckner & Sons have been serving the greater Lehigh Valley region since 1945. Kleckner & Sons are here to serve your appliance needs at two convenient locations in the Lehigh Valley. 2177 MacArthur Road in Whitehall and 575 Chestnut Street in Emmaus. The leader in sales and service prides itself on providing outstanding continuous customer service from the moment the customer steps through the door. Kleckner's provides a wide range of name brand appliances and parts to target all of your appliance needs. They also offer professional delivery and installation options as well as repair services performed by in-house qualified technicians. From kitchen renovations to small specialty appliances to a new laundry pair, Kleckner's has you covered. For more information or inquiries, please contact one of their showroom locations or check out their website at klecknerandsons.com or you can give them a call at the phone number above me here in the video, 610-433-4202. Experience the small business difference for yourself. Shop at Kleckner & Sons Appliances, proud sponsor of the Thursday video forecast. So we're going to do the normal forecast that we normally do. I also want to touch on uh, Tropical Storm Melissa, which is in the caribbean because there's a lot of nonsense going around on social media already and never fails so we're going to just give a preliminary look about that and just kind of hold your horses on a few things so today we have an upper level trough sitting over the region it's uh not very deep but it's deep deep enough uh and there's a little disturbance riding along that that's going to give us some showers across uh, western new york far northwestern pennsylvania i wouldn't be surprised if you get uh, a couple showers running across north central pa today uh, but most of the clouds will be up there associated with that, too. So when you get like up by I-80 and points north, uh, especially the mountainous regions, you could have more clouds than sun up there. But further south and east, we have a lot more sun today because of the sinking air of the mountains and the dry air sinking air uh, from that subsidence that's created as the, uh, you know, further downstream where you don't have that. You're going to have uh, partly to mostly sunny skies today. So it's going to be a little bit different for areas southeast than it is in our northwestern areas. And here's that precipitation on the NAM high-res future simulated radar. This is the afternoon, mid to late afternoon here. A few showers running across up here by Williamsport, Lock Haven. Wouldn't we see surprised if something snuck into northeast PA too, but it would just be a stray shower and that's it. You see where the most of the activity is. It's up for western New York, northwest PA. So not really affecting our area today and not expecting it to really. And then once this moves out, we are back to, uh, again, another split where the northern northwestern areas will have partly to mostly cloudy skies. Southeast will be mostly sunny here on Friday. And then high pressure is going to bring uh, move in here on Saturday. And you can put a big, uh, big H over here that's going to be uh, giving us some nice weather this weekend, uh, at least to start the weekend. And that's going to be over the entire region with mostly sunny skies. So you'll have to wait. I think if you're northeast PA, north central PA, you might have to wait to the weekend to get more of an abundant sunshine. But elsewhere, uh, we'll, we'll have that over the next couple of days. And the biggest thing this week is going to be the temperatures. We're going to be cooler than average straight through the middle of next week. And the seven-day forecast period ends on Wednesday. We're expecting it to be dry for that entire time as of now. Okay, So Sunday is going to be a dry day too. We'll call it partly cloudy because we're going to have a reinforcing front moving through the region. There just won't be any precipitation with it. Uh, so temperatures are going to be in that 55 to 60 degree range all week, all the way through Wednesday. So it will be cooler than average. There's going to be a system moving off to our south here on Monday and Tuesday of next week. Right now, we don't expect it to affect our area directly. It should just slide off the coast, and most guidance is suggesting it will. And then once we get beyond that, beyond midweek, there's going to be an upper level trough and upper level low moving in the region. This is going to be a very deep a uh, very deep trough is going to almost all the way down the Gulf Coast out here like this. So with that trough, there's that deep trough. Uh, there's an upper level low that's associated with this too. It's out here in the Ohio Valley here on the European model. There's going to be something here. I know it's not showing anything here on the European model run. and The GFS didn't show a whole lot either. There's going to be at the very least some showers, if not a uh, coastal low developing here. This tr tries to get one here on the European model today, but it didn't really have uh, have anything going with it. If I go over to the uh, Euro AI, just to give you an idea, actually the Euro Ensemble, where's that at? Uh, that's it. Euro Ensemble for that same period uh, has some you know, some rain with that, so it does have something in the uh, basically center around Thursday and Friday of next week. So we'll that's outside of our seven-day forecast period, but we'll still continue to monitor that too. I think it's the most likely scenario. Some people have been speculating there's going to be a hurricane out here that's now in the Caribbean. I think that is probably nonsense, uh, not impossible. It's a non-zero chance 
So you have to mention it, but you have to caution, and this is how you communicate. This is what you do. You don't just plaster something on social media and go, ooh, look what the Canadian model did today. And it did. It went nuts. Uh, but you got to put context with it. And the context is that this is not likely to happen. It's a, it's a 3% chance or less of occurrence that it affects anywhere along the East Coast, let alone our area specifically. Okay, so I think we need to back off that a little bit. Here's what they're talking about, though. There's a, uh, this is Tropical Storm Melissa. You can see it's sitting right here. There's where the L is, right? And all the convection is, you do a semicircle around this on the right side. That's where all the convection is. You see there's nothing on the left on the uh, western side of this. And that's because you have some pretty strong westerly shear working against this system and it's eroding the the uh western side of it now there's still a uh it's close circulation and there's still wind wrapping all the way around it but the western side is dealing with a lot of wind shear that prevents the convection from wrapping all the way around which is kind of ironic because this part of the world here generally sees easterly trade winds throughout the year okay at this latitude so I uh, get a long, strong uh, westerly shear around that, and that's what's doing that. Uh, if I look at the uh, infrared satellite right now, I'm going to refresh this so we have the latest image. There's the uh, uh, the latest uh, satellite loop. Now, you th you'd, you'd think just by looking at this that, that, that this is where the tropical storm is, and it's not. That's not where it is. It is at 14.3 north, 70 uh 74.6 west which is right about here right there where i'm putting that dot that's where the center of circulation is so all this down here is on the east and southeastern side that's where all the convection is there's nothing out here nothing at all and then you see see all these clouds moving west to east here that's that's part of that shear that i was talking about that's kind of ripping apart this side of the storm so it hasn't really functionally developed yet uh, i don't know what just happened there i got my ad blocker on there i guess i don't know uh, so it hasn't really completely developed yet, and it's going to take a couple of days for it to do that. The National Hurricane Center does have this uh, eventually easing up, up that shear this weekend, which will probably be about Sunday, where the shear goes away and uh, turning into a major hurricane south of Jamaica. See these M's out here? This area, this water, this area that I'm circling right here uh, is like is bath water. It's like 88 to 90 degrees, and it's just in a lot of ocean heat content for this to uh, fuel off of, and it's going to be a slow crawl uh, up until that point. Now, the idea here is that it's, it stops at day five, which is Monday at 8 p.m., and only gets to that point right there. That's it. So we got a long way to go here. Uh, it's going to go over or just west of the island of, of uh, Jamaica as it turns to the northeast and it heads out in this general direction eventually. But by the time it gets to the Bahamas, that might not be until, like, Wednesday or Thursday. So it's going to be a while. Uh, that we'll be dealing with. We're talking about a week ahead before it's even threatening the Bahamas. So, I mean, and it's not that far from there now, really. Uh, so what's really going on here is, uh, just to give you a quick overview, um, you have a, a big, strong high that's sitting over top of the system like this. You put a big H right there. And there's another one over the uh, Leeward Islands, which is out here. You put another big H out here. There's another ridge. So you have competing ridges here. Uh, this is kind of stuck in the middle. That's why it's moving so slow, because you have the influence around the high that's pushing against it this way. So there's no escape route. It's just stuck under here. It just sits and spins. Uh, latest National Hurricane Center advisory at 11 p.m. that I just showed you has it moving at one mile per hour. So it's not hardly moving. Uh, now, we'll pick up speed eventually, but it's not quite there yet. And this is what the European model does, just to pick this, see how long it takes. This is now Sunday. I uh, starting to get some convection wrapping around early next week, and then it finally heads off to the north and east. That is the most likely scenario. Uh, Euro AI is also showing that idea where it kind of goes across. This is Tuesday morning, right there. Hits Jamaica pretty hard. Now, if you live in, if you're going to Jamaica for vacation, or you're on the island watching this from abroad, uh, I'd pay attention closely because they're going to get hammered. I think that anywhere from the Cayman Islands to Jamaica to even you know Haiti and Cuba. I know you can't really travel there, but you get the point here. Uh, Bahamas, too. Just pay attention to these forecasts this week because I think you're more of a certainty to get hit there. Uh, but there's some things here that are preventing this from coming in, and one is the position of this upper-level trough and the ridge of the northeast. This is not a Sandy-like setup. And Sandy, just for you uh, weather geeks here, had this ridge extending a little bit further, a lot further southwest, uh, southeast from where it is shown to be. And the upper low low here, instead of being in over the Quebec province or up by Ni Niagara Falls, instead was down here over Tennessee, which gave it an option to come in. Uh, this is not that sets, this is not that setup, at least not as modeled right now. Again, that's about a 3% chance or less 
that it would do that kind of thing. So I wouldn't hold my breath or panic or anything like that. Just continue to monitor forecasts in a week ahead, and uh, we'll provide any updates as they come. But, you know, right now, I don't want to do this every single day. I'm just putting this out there now because social media is going nuts with this. Just ignore that nonsense. Um, the forecast is most undoubtedly going to be that this is going to head off to the northeast and just continue out the sea and not affect our U.S. interests. I'm EP boy meteorologist Bobby Martich. That is your outlook for October 23rd, 2025. Have a great Thursday.